all right so i just finished with the post processing of the results obtained from the code that we have been writing and i'll be talking about the results now uh, so what i have done is uh, i have uh, run this same code for various cfl numbers uh, starting with cfl number 0.2 and here is the animation of the results obtained so you can see that the wave that is the square wave which we started with is quite diffused and the peak of the wave is obviously much uh, lower than one also uh, it is no more flat uh, as we started with so the peak has reached somewhere here which is around 0.85 i think so if we see that now if we increase the cfl number to say 0.4 then we will see that the diffusion is not as much as it was for point two. So if you see that it was here earlier, now it has gone above to slightly less diffused st diffused state. But still, you can see that there is a lot of diffusion taking place everywhere, and also it has come down from one to something around point nine. So if I keep my cursor here and uh, again run this animation for CFL 0.6 then you will see that the diffusion reduces further and the peak moves higher right now the peak has reached here which is a uh, obviously which is uh, reduction in error uh, because the diffusion error has reduced if I go further and increase CFL to 0.8 then I'll see that the peak still moves higher and we have reached almost uh, uh, almost the value of uh, value of one, which is the exact solution. However, obviously we have, we see that the flatness has reduced and there is a lot of diffusion taking place all around. Uh, so if I keep increasing the CFL number to one, then I'll see that I get the exact solution. Uh, well, uh, there is a caution that we have to uh, we have to uh, look at uh, so if we continue with continue increasing the CFL number beyond one that is if we uh, have a CFL number even slightly more than one so if I take a CFL number of 1.05 also then we will see that the solution no more uh, looks even like the one we are expecting it just it will just blow up that is why we normally do not stick to CFL of 1. So let me just run that situation of a CFL slightly higher than 1 which is 1.05. So if I run this simulation I see that the solution totally blows up and we don't get anything what we were expecting. In fact we do not get even any usable results. You see that here in this locations the solution is totally blo blown up and it is these values are uh, very very large values uh, I have actually limited the uh, y uh, axis to something slightly higher than 1 and slightly lower than 0 that is why we cannot see it however the solutions uh, solution that we have obtained is totally unusable it's totally blown up solution uh, so obviously we cannot take CFL numbers very close to one that uh, because of stability issues that uh, we might uh, accidentally the CFL number might be slightly more than one or uh, slightly more than the acceptable stability criteria and we might have totally unusable results. Another way of uh, improving the diffusion error well uh, if I overlap all the uh, results which we have obtained going from 0.2 to 1 then we see this very clearly that the diffusion error keeps on reducing as we go to higher and higher CFL numbers at 1 obviously it is the exact solution uh, so we can also improve the accuracy uh, by increasing the mesh size so if I keep increasing the uh, number of cells going from 25 cells to 200 cells then we can see that the error keeps reducing uh, so this blue line is pertaining to uh, 
number of cells equal to 25 and this cyan line uh, corresponds to a no, corresponds to number of cells equal to 200 we can clearly see that the uh, the cyan line is more like a square wave obviously it's not a square wave but it's more close to the square wave which is the expected result compared to this blue line uh, so this is uh, this is as much as we can do uh, visually however uh, it's it's much more better to look at this analysis numerically so to do that we will look at the order of accuracy analysis uh, in this analysis we will be using couple of formulas the error being the uh, l1 norm divided by the uh, number of cells uh, the and the order of accuracy will be defined as the slope of the uh, slope of the line on the log log plot of error plotted versus the number of cells uh, in many of the papers you might have seen instead of nx uh, they use delta x however it does not matter only the sign of the uh, order of accuracy what we get will change otherwise it does not matter uh, so uh, if we start with uh, start doing this analysis for a square wave we will see that as the number of cells increase the order reduces obviously that is expected as we already have seen uh, in the plot the order of accuracy is given by this formula and uh, it, it actually goes up to something around 0.5 don't consider this minus sign it only says that the slope is negative uh, that is obviously the order order uh, sorry the error is reducing as we increase the mesh size so the order is 0 0.48 uh, and it goes up to point around approximately 0 0.5 uh, for uh, higher number of cells uh, this is actually not what i was expecting because uh, it is this is a first order scheme and we should have got a order of one well that is this is because we have sharp edges at the uh, uh, i mean sharp edges within the solution and obviously this order of analysis uh, order of accuracy analysis cannot be used for such sharp uh, changes happening in the solution uh, either because of the initial conditions or because of the uh, because of shocks or such structures which might appear in the solution so a better way is to look at the sine wave so if we look at the sine wave and we look at how this solution progresses in time and then we compare the solution with the exact solution uh, and we plot the order then we can clearly see that the order goes uh, close to one the order of accuracy goes close to one which is uh, what we were expecting so uh, to uh, change this uh, change this initial sol uh, initialization from square to the sine wave uh, there was there is only one file which i have changed in the uh, solution uh, that is the solution initializer.java file uh, in this file uh, the solution is uh, i mean the initialize initial value is defined as sine of uh, the sine of pi multiplied by the centroid value of the cell this is a standard initial uh, initial solution which is uh, used for order of accuracy analysis in many papers so i have uh, used that um, in the next video i'll be talking about higher order methods and how to implement higher order methods in our code basically there are only two files which will change one is the variable reconstruction file wherein we will be using a higher order reconstruction for spatial derivatives basically this uh, spatial reconstruction will be done uh, using higher order polynomials and the second file which will change is the time integrator file wherein i'll be using a higher order 
time stepping algorithm for spatial uh, reconstruction uh, i will be using uh, a limiter based dvd at the beginning and then i will be using weno methods weno3 and weno5 methods and we will be looking at the order of accuracy analysis for standard test cases okay so i'll stop here for now uh, and see you soon